My name is Liu Hosh. I'm a postdoc researcher with the SIU Plant Pathology and Nematology program. So I work with uh, soybean nematodes and fungal pathogens uh, of importance to our state, looking to developing and also in, uh, improving management practices for those pathogens. And I grew up in a farm, so I've been passionate about ag, you know, since I was a little kid and I wanted to get a PhD and I thought, you know, Illinois would be a great place to be because it's so ag focused uh, and then you have so many opportunities to develop projects in different crops and things that I was not used to before. So I wanted to use this opportunity to talk about the southern root knot nematode. It is a soybean pathogen that does not cause as much damage as the soybean system nematode in our region, but it can be very problematic here in some regions of southern Illinois. There are several root knot nematode species that can parasitize soybean in Illinois, but towards southern Illinois, uh, you're more, more likely to find the southern root knot nematode with the scientific name uh, Meloidogan incognita. And the root knot nematode infects the root system of soybean, and then uh, it causes galls or knots because as the nematode starts feeding on the root system, the roots will swell and form galls or, or not. So that's the, where the name comes from. So this is how a plant should look like in this field by this time of the season. Uh, and then here we have a, the worst scenario in this uh, case, right? So a plant that has been uh, infected by the, the root nematodes on their very uh, uh, severe levels. So this plant has no yield potential at all, right? Whereas this plant is already reaching you know the reproductive stages so we are out here in the field and as you can see from the drone image plants that are infected with this uh, nematode they have very limited yield potential symptoms caused by the root on nematode usually appear in patches right so we're here over a, a hill with uh, very high sand contents and then that, on, that on, not only favors the development of the nematode because it prefers a high temperatures and sandy soils, but also worsens the symptoms, right? We're in a very dry year, and then plants that have a damaged root system tend to uh, show more symptoms in general. The foliar symptoms caused by the southern root knot, root knot nematode can be, you know, confused with uh, soybean system nematode and even other uh, soy-borne pathogens, right? Because you have that general stunted growth the plants are going to appear yellow and then they're going to be underdeveloped. But the way to differentiate this problem from soybean system and other uh, soy borne pathogens is through a proper uh, root inspection. So to do a root inspection, it's very important not to pull the plants from the soil, but use a shovel and remove them gently from the soil. And then, especially in a dry year, as you pull those plants, you may leave the damaged roots or the characteristic symptoms in the soil and you may have a false negative, right? So you're gonna misdiagnose something because you're not sampling uh, your root system properly. If you see those galls or those knots, those are only caused by root knot nematodes. So that's your diagnostic key to differentiate these two problems. So at this point in the season, there's not really anything we can do to prevent uh, yield losses, but a proper diagnosis will guide you uh, to select management practices at the long term. Corn is also a host of the southern root knot nematode, so crop rotation will not be an effective tool to reduce these populations. But remember that crop rotation is still very important to manage soybean system toad and other soy borne pathogens. Root knot nematode resistant varieties are available in the markets. Talk to your seed provider to explore materials with uh, better uh, root knot resistance levels. Seed applied nematicides can be effective, but much alike. Uh, soybean system told that seed applied nematicide can only provide protection for a couple of weeks. Uh, seed applied nematicides can off only offer so much protection. And remember, anytime that you're working with a nematicide and pesticide, remember to follow and read the label uh, properly. As early in the V1 to V3 stages, you can start seeing foliar symptoms and then you can see the galls forming. So the life cycle of this nematode takes about uh, 25 to 30 days depending on uh, temperature and other environmental factors but there are no foliar applications or any other you know in-season management practice that can be effective against this problem right so it's all about selecting varieties and using seed applied uh, products there are several online resources available talking a little bit more about the life cycle and management practice for the southern root knot nematode in soybean so i would recommend you check those out if you have this problem in your farm and also check the illsoadvisor.com I hope this guide helps you to diagnose the southern root knot nematode in soybean and uh, to implement management practices uh, in your farm during this season.